I'm Jackie Cohen Roth, founder and CEO of Cannabis MD. Cannabis MD is a robust platform, including the website that you're viewing this on, as well as hosting events throughout the year where we focus on education for patients, healthcare providers, and uh, making even better experts out of industry experts. Uh, we have upcoming October 3rd, a very cool virtual conference. Uh, thanks to COVID, we went, um, we went virtual and with that, brings in a national audience. Um, that is our Cannabis Science and Therapeutics at, uh, Provider Education Forum, which we'll um, speak more about later. Uh, cannabis MD is focused on supporting nascent medical cannabis programs, whether they be at the state, national, or even uh, international level. Our CBMD video profiles, that's what you're watching right now, are my conversations with cannabis industry founders, entrepreneurs, scientists, providers, uh, regulators. These are people who are impacting the cannabis industry of today and certainly the cannabis industry of tomorrow. These are people who have a shared commitment to establishing industry best practices and to deliver quality medical cannabis patient care. Today, I'm very excited to host Dr. John Vaught. With more than 15 years of experience developing and commercializing technologies for human diagnostics, food safety, and agriculture, Dr. Vaught brings a diverse background with both a strong scientific and practical business acumen. As CEO and co-founder of Front Range Biosciences, Dr. Bott drives the evolution of cannabis agriculture through science, improving efficiency for farmers, along with safety and reliability for consumers. He's built a team of experts in horticulture, agriculture, translational research, and supply chain professionals who are moving the needle forward for the cannabis industry with a focus on innovation and sustainability. Prior to founding Front Range Biosciences, Dr. Vaught served as the Director of Assay Development for Velocity Sciences and was Senior Scientist for Soma, Somalogic, which he led cross-functional teams in the development and commercialization of assay technologies for personalized medicine and clinical validation for pharmaceutical companies. Dr. Vaught is a member of the Future of Medical Cannabis Roundtable, part of the CBM Provider Education Forum. This roundtable will examine and discuss the intersection of, I say, the legacy cannabis industry with traditional healthcare, the pharmaceutical industry, as well as the critical role that technology plays in all across. Tech, our discussion will uh, include guidance on approaches to multidisciplinary collaboration and practical application of translational research models to advance cannabis science. Does the future of medical cannabis include the pharmaceuticalization of the industry of the plan? That's something that we're going to be discussing throughout the day. And right now, I'm uh, happy to bring on board Dr. Vaught. Welcome. Thank you, Jackie. It's nice to be here. Yeah. So you're based in Colorado and you also have operation in California, am I correct? Yeah, we have operations right now in Colorado, California, Wisconsin, and then we have a, a small R&D division in Barcelona. Oh, wow. Okay. All, certainly all over. Um, Front Range Biosciences has this very strong background in the agricultural industry that, that I, I led in with. So including coffee, nursery services, low THC cannabis, which I consider hemp, or we refer to as hemp, as well as high THC content, which is the focus of Cannabis MD. Particularly, we're focused on uh, the medical use of high THC content. What did you see in the cannabis industry that brought you in? Yeah, wow, well, it's a uh, it's a it's an interesting question. So first of all, scientifically, we we think of of cannabis, the plant, whether it's high THC or low THC. Scientifically, they're they're pretty much all the same, um, just different traits and uh, different regulatory environments that we have to work in. Um, sure. So uh, yeah, so I, I think that's the first point to make. And then um, you know, in terms of uh, what drove me. To get interested into this in, in this industry was, um, you know, I spent uh, about 15 years in the molecular diagnostics world and worked a lot on on human healthcare and uh, and human disease and really understanding how that played out and and um, you know in, in today's healthcare system and um, I also spent some time in food safety and uh, 
you know, I, I, I got really interested in agriculture and uh, really began to see uh, agriculture as uh, really a, a critical part of so many different uh, issues that we have in, uh, in, in human health and, and disease. And, um, you know, and, and so when cannabis became legal here in Colorado, and it, uh, it, it started to become a, a you know, a, a real industry, um, and, and there was an opportunity to do some work in it. I, uh, I, I thought, man, what an interesting and amazing way to combine my experience in, uh, in human diagnostics and, and food safety um, with agriculture and, and on probably what I consider the, about the most exciting plant in the world. It's uh, a treasure trove of, uh, of unique chemistries and compounds, and I think it's even going to eventually be a great, uh, or is a reasonably good protein source and, and uh, fiber source. So from my perspective, it was just a great opportunity to uh, combine, uh, you know, these, these things that I really care about and, uh, and hopefully make a, a, a difference. So you got in early in Colorado? Um, I, I don't know how early it was. Uh, I started working on uh, Front Range in 2015 as uh, when we incorporated and then uh, and then we started operations in 2016 and um, you know but uh, you know as an organic chemist though and, and being trained in the, in the pharmaceutical world I mean a lot of people don't realize this but um, you know pretty much every drug you know that's that's out there it, it almost always starts with a natural product from a plant and right. uh, you know that's, that's pretty much tried and true. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, it turns out nature's still better at chemistry than uh, even the best organic chemists in the world. There's probably some of them that they heard me say that would, would kick me under the table. But, um, but yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it's true. And I think this plant is a, a really great example of that in terms of the different chemistries that, uh, that it can produce um, that, that have the potential to really impact human health in a, in a meaningful way. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm dying to speak to you about uh, personalized medicine. And so my background is it's a, a traditional healthcare, which is changing with the inclusion of more and more providers um, considering treating patients with medical cannabis, but that uh, personalized medicine. Um, so the focus of uh, Cannabis MD is very much so on um, this void of, of education and the clinical training of physicians, the advanced practice providers, whether they be CRNPs, RNs, um, mental health professionals, you know, whomever. And um, that's uh, a primary driver for us to host this uh, provider forum. What is, um, what's Front Range Biosciences? Are you doing in or any training while you're out there? It sounds like you, whether COVID or not, you've been uh, do a bunch, bunch of traveling. Yeah, well, I'm not traveling nearly as much as I used to, but um, I, I certainly, um, I, uh, I, I back and forth between our operations fairly regularly, um, especially between here and California, which is really where we're really focused. Um, yeah, so our, our focus at FRB, we really are, are focused on the early part of the supply chain, the very beginning of it in agriculture. And so, um, and we consider ourselves an, an agricultural biotechnology company. Um, we specialize in next generation plant breeding, uh, plant tissue culture, and uh, and then cannabis seed and, and hemp seed development uh, to really try and improve you know the reliability of certain traits um, you know whether it's for industrial hemp or CBD hemp or high cannabinoid hemp or even medical cannabis um, in, in terms of plant genetics. So that's that's really our focus, and uh, we do a, we have a, a lot of research going on, product development, and then we also have a lot of commercial activity in our greenhouses and laboratories. You know, where at the end of the day, we're, we're selling plants and seeds to, uh, to customers. Um, you know, we are already in, involved with some, uh, some potential partnerships um, and have conversations ongoing. Um, some, some of which through my, my old um, molecular diagnostic uh, connections, but around trying to better understand, um, you know, how some of these ingredients that are produced in the plant, um, you know, can be, uh, you know, better understood in the clinical setting. And so, um, you know, it's certain, certainly an area we're really interested in. Um, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned, our focus is really more on the, uh, on, on the, the agriculture side right now. Mm -hmm. So with the different markets, whether it be Colorado, California, uh, Barcelona, um, you've got a lot of different regulatory uh, landscapes to work through. So 
you know, I know California has its issues. And so how are you finding the international international market? Um, so we, we haven't started commercial activity yet in, uh, in Europe. It's primarily been a research station um, in, a, in a collaboration with, uh, with the CRAG and IRTA, I-R-T-A, um, which is, uh, uh, it's really uh, like an agricultural research center, um, uh, kind of a public partner or public private um, partnership um, between the university there and, uh, and, and this private research um, foundation. And so um, we, uh, we've been doing research there for about 18 months and we do a lot of um, our, our breeding uh, and what we call pre-breeding work there. Uh, we've got a lot of germplasm that we've acquired um, as, as part of that program. Um, from Europe and Asia and, and other places around the world, and, and we're using that to mine for uh, unique traits. In terms of the market, um, you know, we were actually planning to uh, to start up some commercial activity in Europe, um, starting with hemp next year, and uh, and and then eventually we'd like to to move into the medical cannabis side. Um, we actually, uh, I'm excited to announce, we just received. Uh, I guess it was two or three weeks ago. Um, but we just received a permit from the AM, uh, AEMPS, uh, it's basically like the Spanish FDA, uh, to do work in, uh, in medical cannabis, um, specifically around some CBD cultivars. But um, we, we expect it's kind of the first step to being able to, uh, to move more and more into the, into the THC side of, um, of, the, of the breeding and, and production. And so we're excited to have that. And uh, yeah, 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 thank you. So, but that's, that's kind of where we're heading, and we want to launch in Europe, and, uh, and I think in Europe it's a lot more medically focused anyway. Um, yeah, in terms that, of yeah. I mean, that's uh, my experience. I had the opportunity to speak at a conference in Malta last November, and just, I mean, Malta just was just grabbing people, you know, uh, I mean, not literally, but, um, you know, encur so much encouragement, and then, of course, being the entry point into the EU, um, but um, I, I'm familiar with, and I had the opportunity to, um, Re, uh, meet Riley and hear her speak, uh, Riley Maidler, and her mom. And um, so I understand that you guys are in some sort of partnership or is it a research project. What are you doing with uh, Riley Sunshine? Yeah, so we're really excited about uh, about that partnership. We um, uh, it, it it all started with um, with uh, with the connection we had, um, an introduction to them, and uh, and you know just just really. Uh, Fascinated by, uh, by 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 what they've done and 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 what she's done. She's a, a really incredible. Um, yeah, she's fourteen now. 14. And she's, she's yeah, got her company, yeah. her foundation, and, yeah. uh, and also, by the way, she she fought off fought off a very uh, nasty, life threatening form of cancer. And so, right, um, I think yeah, bone cancer, right? That yeah. She's a little hero, and and um, yeah, absolutely so, strong, yeah. strong young woman. Yeah. So when when we when I found out about um about her and her situation, and uh, she wanted to grow her own hemp farm this year, I think they ran a small one last year. And um, and so uh, we we offered to uh, to step in and, and provide them some plants, um, you know, free of charge. And then uh, we asked them to to contribute back to us also, in, in terms of helping collect some data and give her a chance to uh, to um, you know to learn a little bit about uh, you know field trial programs and, and breeding. And so she's uh, she's she's been great. She's got a a, a team of volunteers and, and her family, and uh, they're out there farming and. You know, it, it, it's also really exciting for us and for me, especially, you know, to see, uh, you know, the next generation of farmers and people getting excited about agriculture. I think it's something that's really missing um, in, uh, in today's world and uh, the educational curriculum that we uh, that we see out there. And so, um, so yeah, it's been great. And we're, uh, we're going to work with them as well once they harvest their crop and uh, doing some analytical chemistry work. We're, um, we're trying to understand how some of these uh, unique varieties that we have in our program, some minor cannabinoids, um, how they perform in this mid-Atlantic region, and uh, hopefully be able to uh, provide some uh, unique uh, genetics and new varieties over the years that uh, will support farmers in, uh, in that region, and then also lead to some interesting medicines for, um, for, for groups like, uh, like Riley's. Yeah, I, I'm here in the mid-Atlantic in Annapolis, Maryland, and so they're in Virginia, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, you know, interesting the growing conditions and we have this tremendous farmland out here, mm -hmm. um, certainly on Maryland's Eastern Shore I and mean, everywhere. Um, so I, I'd love to then dive into um, this personalized medicine 
And so are you, um, tell me about the, tell us about the development of, you're saying uh, seeds and what are you doing? What does personalized medicine mean to me the medical cannabis industry? Yeah, it's, um, that's an interesting question. I think there's, there's several different ways I see, um, you know, cannabis playing out, um, you know, whether it's, it's the hemp side or the, the high THC side, um, you know, playing out in the, in the marketplace and, and, in the healthcare world, I think, um, you know, I'm a big, big fan of, you know, herbal based, uh, you know, wellness products and medicines, dietary supplements. Um, you know, there's some, some really great things out there. And I, I think, uh, I think that's going to be a, a really important area for cannabis, um, especially given the, uh, the interesting uh, interactions and some of the, the entourage type effects um, that you see with, with different combinations of cannabinoids and some of the other compounds um, that are found in this plant. Um, I also think there's going to be a really important uh, segment of the industry for producing, you know, active pharmaceutical ingredients. So, you know, whether it's uh, modified, you know, cannabinoids that are, are you know, put together in a, in a medicinal chemistry lab or, um, you know, and I think there's going to be, uh, you know, we've already got, um, you know, there's already some drugs that, uh, that are, are in clinical trials right now. So I think that's going to be um, another area. And then um, I actually think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity for this plant as, uh, as a superfood as well. Um, oh, so that's new, I, you know, uh, plant or protein. So I haven't. Yeah, so grain. So the hemp grain has been around for a long time, but um, you know, and it's it's already a, a really you know pretty healthy uh, plant-based protein. It's it's got amino acids and fatty acids and um, some other interesting uh, flavonoids and, and antioxidants. And so I think um, you know I, I think with some some breeding, we'll be able to drastically improve on that. And uh, you know, and I think there's a, a lot of potential there for, for you know kind of daily nutrition. Um, whether it's in, in supplements or uh, protein powders or, or you know, other, uh, other forms. Do you see, I mean, there, yeah, I've got some, some notes here that, um, so the benefit of say eating, um, eating leaves where they're uh, high in THC is my, THCA in my understanding. So there's no opportunity um, for psychotropic effects. Mm -hmm. And do, do you see a future where you know, we're going to be picking up leaves of uh, bags of cannabis leaves like my arugula in the grocery store. You know, I I I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say it's too far fetched. I think it yeah. could be really interesting, and I think you know the challenges right now is that I don't believe they taste very well, and their 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 texture isn't ideal. But um, you know, it's that's something that uh, you know we've been able to solve in other leafy greens and and make them um, you know more palatable. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's an interesting angle, and I think I should also bring up because I didn't mention it you know a minute ago was you know I think at the end of the day right now you when know, we think about personalized medicine, we're just beginning to really understand the endocannabinoid system, right. and what yeah. you know is that it's got you know it's got impact pretty much throughout every major organ system in the body almost it's it's everywhere right. and you know we've got you know we've identified a couple of receptors and there's some early work on some others maybe um, some other different forms of it but you know and i mean after spending years working on you know uh, target validation for drugs and understanding you know receptor you know ligand interactions and and how they affect you know the different organ systems um we got a lot to learn about this one and uh, i i think um, I think we're going to see that, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of opportunity for this plant to be part of a, you know, of a, of a daily, um, you know, nutrition regimen or, uh, you know, as I mentioned, dietary supplements, I think are a really important area that, um, you know, we need the FDA to, to make sure that yeah. they protect that regulatory path. And I also think it's, it's a, a great, you know, people, consumers are, you know, they're, they're tired of, treating themselves when they get sick, right? They'd rather be proactive and at least a lot of people do and they want to be proactive and uh, and, and take things to stay ahead of it and, and you know, more wellness applications versus, oh, let's just wait till you're really sick and then treat a disease. Um, I think you need both, but I think this plant has a lot of opportunity on the, on the wellness side. Do you have, you, you spoke about uh, modifying um, some gene modification on cultivar? No, what I was talking about was uh, modifying the, the cannabinoids in chemistry. So, oh, you know, okay. so, yeah, differentiate on that. And, uh, yeah, help me understand that one. Yeah, no, I was, you know, so typically in, um, in, in, a, in a drug discovery program, 
Um, you know, there's lots of different approaches, but, you know, kind of a traditional way is, you know, they build combinatorial chemistry libraries of different uh, compounds. Um, so you might take uh, like a, a, a structure like CBD or THC and then um, perform different chemistries on it and, and modify it. And, you know, a, a, a simple example of that is the difference between CBD and THC. They're very, very similar chemical structures very different effects on the human body. And you can, you know, or the difference between THC and CBN, that's maybe even an easier example to use. Um, you know, you can simply oxidize THC to CBN and it drastically changes the effect. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that you could do in a chemistry lab. And, you know, but instead of just doing it, you know, one, one part of the molecule, you could decorate the molecule with lots of different structures. And that's what medicinal chemistry is, is, you know, is really all about is they, you know, modify it and, and say, all right, does this make it faster to, to absorb? Or does it make it less, you know, psycho, psychoactive or more, you know, there's a lot of different modifications that can be done. And that's really falls in the world of, um, you know, of pharmaceutical and drug development. And I think that's, that's what I was referring to. And so that is where this big word pharmaceuticalization of <laughs> yeah. the cannabis industry. So applying these techniques, these, the science of what the pharmaceutical industry has been using for years. And that's why I see the intersection of, that leg, of our legacy and the existing uh, cannabis industry today. Yeah, and I sit here with, I have a, uh, right in front of me, my, um, the, chem, the chemical structure of THC and CBD. So it's uh, got me through my uh, cannabis chemistry <laughs> in my master's program. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, fascinating stuff. And um, yeah, I think, you know, we, we've got so much to talk about. It's going to be a really exciting conversation uh, to have with this round table. Um, you know, you touched upon technologists a bit about the data gathering that, um, you know, it sounds like you're doing it everywhere, whether you, you mentioned it specifically with Riley Sunshine, but I'm um, you know, interested in just like, you know, technology differences between what you're doing in the States um, versus what you're doing in Spain. Is there um, benefit you know, Using a lot of the similar technologies, um, you know, it's a, uh, in Spain, it's a very typical plant uh, research center. So they've got tissue culture and um, genomics and bioinformatics and um, and then greenhouses to manage nurseries and, and controlled environment greenhouses so you can change conditions and see how plants respond. So that's a lot of what we're doing there. They've got analytical chemistry lab and, and you know, it's very similar to what we have here back in the States. Um, we have different parts of our program going on um, in the different areas that we have. So we've got, um, you know, we're working on certain breeding projects in Spain, certain breeding projects here in Colorado, and then uh, even working with some licensed cannabis companies in California to do breeding projects there. So, you know, we've, we've kind of, uh, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of different, uh, you know, research projects in, in terms of breeding. And, and really, we're really focused on development, you know, really developing varieties that, you know, people talk about some of these minor cannabinoids. We've certainly seen a lot of CBG out in the market, but, um, you know, I think there's, there's other interesting, um, compounds out there, THCV and CBDV and CBC. And I, I you know, we're, we're uh, developing varieties that we'll be able to uh, get those into the, into these markets as well. Yeah. I was going to ask you, what are the exciting cannabinoids that you're seeing? So you just named them. Thank you. So if um, somebody would like to get a hold of you and um, work with front range biosciences, what's the best way to do that? You know, you can visit our website at www.frontrangebio.com. Um, a lot of ways to get in touch with us there. You can uh, get on our newsletter list and, uh, and, and learn a little more about what we do. And um, yeah, we're, uh, we're always happy to, uh, to speak with folks. And uh, we've got a lot of exciting things coming uh, down the pipeline here. And uh, we're, uh, you know, we're excited to continue driving this industry forward. Yeah, it's exciting. And uh, every year heading to Virginia, I'll meet you there with masks on. <laughs> yeah yeah no i uh we're, we're gonna we're gonna get out there at, at some point soon here actually planning a visit for the next month or so all right great i hope it works yeah. my, right. my mom's family's all from virginia so that's that's uh, i grew up in the southeast so my mom's family is all from virginia i grew up in the southeast oh great yeah it's beautiful here but it's certainly gorgeous in colorado and california 
true. Although we're on fire right now. So. I was going to say, yeah, it's either, and I've got a friend who's telling me just like this humidity and thunderstorms, and it just sounds sounds wacky. It has been. Yeah, it's been a really weird summer. Yeah. So, anyways, we're All excited right. to be on the panel. So, thanks for the uh, the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So excited to see you October third, and um, that's it. So thanks so much for participating in the CBMD video profile, and we'll be hearing much more from you on October third. Thanks. Bye. Yep.